Hey, my friend just bought a townhome, his second one in two years. How do you do that? That's, That's what, what we're, we're talking, talking about today. today. Welcome to the Utah Real Estate Show podcast, the show where two agents and a lender teach real estate best practices by talking through mistakes we've seen and made. A lot. It's money that you're sitting on in your home, you're living in it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you don't see it because it's not in your checking account. So a lot of people don't realize that they have it. And if you've owned a home in the last, for the, for the last two to three years, you have at least $80,000 of equity here. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Utah Real Estate Show. I'm Tyler Kazer, Utah Real Estate Agent. Jason Christiansen, Mortgage Lender. Eric West, Utah Real Estate Agent. And today we are talking about equity. And we have some interesting scenarios that are unfolding. Um, in, the, in the opener, we talked about people who have managed to come into a lot of equity. Kind of like, I call it the equity lottery and everyone's winning. Well, it, it's a really good example right now because I'm talking to several clients. I'm also running uh, social media campaigns, all sorts of stuff to try to find sellers and to show that they can still buy their house, investment properties and mm -hmm. different things. And they're going, how can I buy another investment property right now? I've only lived in this house for two years. I don't even make a ton of money. Well, let's, so the most common scenario is They've been in a home. Okay, let's let's use the scenario. Okay. So in 2019, purchase price three hundred twenty thousand. Now that same home is worth four hundred forty four thousand. Right. So they've got some equity. real numbers. So it's a huge <laughs> incline in the market. Okay, and a lot of people are like, "Well, my equity doesn't do me any good." Well, you, so you sell your house, you get that equity, you buy a newer, bigger house. Right. Bigger. Well, that's that, what that's, the, most people sit there and go, "If I if I'm living in a townhome." my next purchase should be a single home family home. home. Single right, yeah. and that's what the real estate agent thinks that they want as well. I get a sale and a purchase, I get two deals. But what if we don't sell? Yeah, what if we're looking out for your needs and really going here, <laughs> let's help you build that portfolio and buy another investment property. Yeah, so that's how you become a homeowner investor mm -hmm. instead of just a homeowner. Okay, and so let's talk about um, how this works, right? So if we've got this um, in our in our story problem, right? That's <laughs> what we've got going here. Um, if you hated story problems and math, I'm sorry, we're gonna go through one today. <laughs> this one's better, you'll like this yeah, one. Yeah, this yes. one's happy because yes. you know, you're know you making money, so how can you not love well, this? Well, and real, real quick, so equity is what? Is money that is in your home that if you sold right now, you could get. Yes. Okay. Correct. Yes, and there's a couple of different ways to get into that equity. Um, the easiest way is to sell your home. Mm -hmm. The second easiest way, and we're gonna talk about this today. But is it is dollars. Yes, it is yes. dollars. Yeah, it's the yeah. difference between what it's worth and what you owe. Yes, okay, good. Right, and so, yeah, so if it's worth 440 and you owe 283, because that's what you've been paying down over the course of the loan, you now have- Plus appreciation. Plus, yeah, plus Which is huge. Well, appreciation. The reason I say is, I remember when I bought my first home, I had no idea what equity was. Yeah, that's actually it's, kind of I mean, we talk about it a lot now, but a lot, it's money that you're sitting on in your home, you're living in it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. you don't see it because it's not in your checking account. So a lot of people don't realize that they have it. And if you've owned a home in the last, for the, for the last two to three years, you have at least $80,000 of equity here in Utah. Yeah, because we've, we've been putting on quite a bit of equity mm -hmm. and it almost doesn't matter what you bought your house for in 2015 or 2012 or mm -hmm. whatever it was, or 2019. Yeah. Um, we won't guarantee that you have 80,000, but you yeah. should, or if, if you, not more. If you've been paying your mortgage, <coughs> living in Utah, and you haven't like refinanced your house at all. Yeah, there you go. There's you you have equity. Yeah. yeah. Now, if you know, in refinancing and so, your house is so bad. getting to where our example of George has a townhome that he bought. Yeah. For, well, he bought it for three hundred twenty grand. Okay. Put a twenty thousand dollar down payment on it. Started with a loan of three hundred thousand, and by today, by the we're in February twenty twenty two. Now that loan is only two hundred eighty three dollars. Just by paying down the balance, minimum payments two hundred eighty three thousand. Pay, 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 right. So now four hundred forty four thousand dollars price of the home or, or value of the home because of appreciation. So because it's appreciation. gone up that much. And now we have the loan that is only two hundred eighty three thousand dollars. Um, the math whizzes out there that are watching already know that there's $165,000 of equity. Mm -hmm. so, so how does he access that and actually do it? Because he saw my ad that says, hey, come buy your uh, second investment home. You have this and you're going, hey, I'm 22 years old. 
I bought my town home two years ago. Yeah. I want to do that. How in the world can I do that? <laughs> And he's yeah. been spending all his money on other places, so he doesn't have a down payment, right? Because if you have a down payment, <laughs> exactly. you just buy another one. But this is a 22-year-old kid, right? 22-year-old exactly. male. Those yes. bank statements are fun to look at. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so the easiest way, and the way I suggest, if you have a stellar interest rate on your first one, well, let's pretend that your loan's perfect. So you go get a home equity line of credit. Now, it's super common to go to an 80% loan to value, combined right. loan to value, so the first and the second. Now this is how it works. So if your home's worth 444,000, we're gonna take 80% of that. That's gonna be what they're gonna lend on. Mm -hmm. So you take that difference minus what you already owe, and, and so that's about $72,200 that makes up that 80% combined loan to value. Mm -hmm. So you have $72,000 to play with. So the easiest way is you just put 5% down on your next home. Now, a home equity line of credits, like right now, you can get 100%, which means you could get a line of credit for 165,000, but the interest rate goes up the higher yeah. combined loan to value you And so go. we'd really have to play around with your situation to see if it's something smart worth doing. But if he goes and buys another townhome right now, the first question that always says, why would I go and buy another house right now? I paid hmm. 320 for mine. A new townhome is 485 right now. Right, right. So, so I'm you're losing telling money. me yeah. that you can make me money by buying something that much higher. Yeah, yes. absolutely. So here's the question. What is a townhome renting for 444000 right now? Uh, it kind of depends old. on the area, but you're going to be renting it close to two grand. Easy. So yeah. that's covering the whole payment and then some. Yep. So mm -hmm. you're going to buy this new place, which is more expensive at a higher interest rate because interest rates are higher mm -hmm. right now. So your principal and interest payment is gonna be about $2,200 at a 4% rate, mm -hmm. which is a little higher than what they're at right now, but it's just, it's good, yeah, easy numbers. numbers. Add, add your uh, HOA dues, property taxes, you got that going on. Here's the interesting thing. So let's say you don't want to move out of your townhome and you wanna get an investment property townhome instead. So you're gonna put down 20%. Okay. So you're going to four times your down payment. Mm -hmm. But you're buying an investment property, so the interest rate's higher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your payment's only about $177 less for putting down four times the down payment. Because of interest rates and what you're putting down. Right, mm -hmm. so that's why you're gonna vacate your primary residence. Yes. You're gonna rent that and move into another one. Well, and that's where it comes back to talking to us and setting up a strategy and what actually plays out in the best of your interest. Because what plays out for George over here is not what it is for Frank or Carly. It's, it's different. Absolutely. So, but these are numbers that are real here. So you go, well, why would I go do that? I, my payment, I'm not, I'm renting out my other one. I'm not gonna make any money each month. I have I'm not that. cash oh, flowing. Oh, so yeah, why so. are you trying to Tyler, get me Tyler, to buy another to townhome at almost 200 grand more than what I bought my last townhome? Are you just trying to get a sale? <laughs> yes. Yes. I just want the commission. <laughs> I just want the commission. <laughs> no, and here's why. You made 200, well, how many thousands? 165,000. Hundred, $165,000 in two years. And oh, now you're going to hook yourself up to another property that will make some some thousands yeah, of dollars. This is all about percentages and ratios. If you're going to mm -hmm. make, I don't care how much equity, let's say equity slows down crazy. The market crashes. It goes, it goes berserk. And we go back to the 30 year average of just over 3%. Sure. You could be making 3% on 400,000 or you can be making 300% on 800,000. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I personally would rather be making 3% on 800,000 because that's gonna make sure that my uh, portfolio is increasing in value at a higher rate than if I were living um, in a cardboard box well, down by the river. And then you sit there a and fan. you look at a that fan. and go, okay, well, that's just two years. So if you do that every two years, yep. look at where you're sitting at in 10 years. You just bought five homes that you still own currently and you're setting yourself up. And let's say you stop at that and by the time you retire, you have five homes that you could have paid off. You didn't do any more investments. You're now sitting on $2 million of equity, yeah. if not more, more. plus cash more. flow. There's your retirement. 
Yeah. So, you're, you're so that and that is one of our vocabulary words for mm-hmm. the day, children. <laughs> uh, it is house hacking. Okay, so if you've heard that phrase, house hacking, this is what we're referring mm-hmm. to: taking your owner-occupied home, renting it out, moving yourself into a new owner-occupied home where mm-hmm. you can put down just five percent, and then living in it, gaining the appreciation. Setting that one aside as a rental, moving into the So next. here's a question I get all the time. People say, well, I have an owner-occupied loan, so I have to live in it for the term of the loan. No, you don't. You have to live in it. Well, your intention has to be to live in it to start with. Exactly. But as soon as... as Federal regulation at its max says a year. Mm-hmm. It's your intent to live here for a year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you're really aggressive and you want to do this every year, you're keeping all the federal laws, all the federal regulations, right? Well, and it, and this yeah. is why when, I know when I'm talking to clients, I say, hey, look, when you're picking your lender, you wanna work with somebody that you're gonna continue to work with. I don't want you just to work with, you know, Jason here just once and you never see him again because you're the next house you are not you don't need to buy. Again, you, maybe you are in that family, you don't need to move anymore. Well, we want you to establish that relationship as soon as you buy that townhome, start working with them again going, hey, I wanna buy another townhome in a year. Mm-hmm. What do I need to do? How do I need to save? Where do I need to structure my stuff? You start working with a, a good professional real estate agent. Yep, hey, same story. I want to start looking at this. Let's start running numbers. Let's start seeing where stuff's at. So, yeah, we didn't get a sell out of it. I'm okay with that because we're helping you build that portfolio and you know that we're here to help. We're going to create longevity. Well, the other thing for you real estate agents that are watching out there, the average individual keeps the of home five to seven years. Mm-hmm. So every five to seven years, if you are the best agent out there, you'll get two deals. You'll get the sale and the purchase, right? But if you can really take care of your clients and they want to invest, you're going to get a deal every you, year. You could do one every year. Yeah. Yeah. Just keep on perpetuating. Yep. And that's for the clients, when you establish a team, you have a real estate agent Mm -hmm. you like, you have a lender you like, the lender can keep your information so you have to supply less. They already know the way you wanna set it up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The real estate agent already knows the type of house you want and what your comfort level is, the areas you like. And so things can go much, much more smoothly the longer you work together. Yeah, so drop a comment down below, send us a message, you know, ask those questions of how do we set up this strategy? How do we set up this plan? Because then we can meet up and say, hey, look, this is how your plan and strategy would work. And this is how this one would work. And we could set up those options so you have all the information to make an educated decision. Yeah. Well, the other thing like I was talking to borrowers today, we live out of state, and they're thinking about buying another investment property in Utah. Um, the optimal numbers, like to be the most aggressive in investing, isn't something they're comfortable with. Mm-hmm. So we talk down, okay, where do you, where do you want to be? Mm-hmm. And that's that's exactly why you need a plan because numbers are great, but we're all ruled by emotion. So where are you comfortable and let's stick there. Mm-hmm. What'd you learn? Uh, well, my key takeaway is Utah is an appreciation state and to get the most advantage out of the appreciation state where you live, you, you need to be upgrading the housing that you're in and getting more property under your belt so that you can continue to appreciate on more properties. Yeah, it's important to remember that the difference in payment between an owner-occupied and an investment property aren't that different. Remember that you need to establish that team, create that relationship with a good agent and a good loan officer to set up that strategy in place to find those investments. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Put your strategy down below or give us a phone call. Subscribe. We would love to talk it over with you. If you want to get in touch with us, shoot us a text at 801-228-7687. Make sure you mention the show. You can email us at the Utah Real Estate Show at gmail.com. You can watch this show on YouTube and you can listen on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. If you learned something or if you really love this show, give us a like on YouTube and drop a rating on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen. The Utah Real Estate Show is a production of Hive Collective at Presidio Real Estate with support from Security Home Mortgage. The NMLS number for Security Home Mortgage is 178787. The NMLS number for Jason Christiansen is 240472, Equal Housing Lender. Not only is this not legal or investment advice, but you should definitely talk to a pro before you make any real estate decision. Every situation is different and should be considered in context. Copyright Jason Christiansen, Eric Wist, and Tyler Kazare. All rights reserved.
Talk to you next week. I think we're, the table's smaller. Oh! <laughs> my finger! <laughs> <sighs> the table's smaller. The table's smaller compared to... I might have just gave it weight off there. Like, yeah. out. I thought my dryer well, was shrinking the clothes. <laughs> Turns out it's the refrigerator. Turns out it's the refrigerator. Dang it. You guys let me. Rob, mic stands. Yeah, yeah it would have helped if you. It, it would have helped if you brought the mic stands. So. <laughs> I need like caffeine or something. Wake up my brain. I haven't had caffeine in months. Tyler, how many primary residences have you bought? Um, I bought three. I don't know where I'm going with that. <laughs> How many do you have? Three. How did you get those? What are we doing? You built a strategy <laughs> and numbers. That was, okay. that was awesome. let's, let's watch that. Just Tyler, do you realize that Salt Lake and Utah County had 20% equity gain last year? Holy crap, that's how much equity!